If you have a spare fish tank laying around and you have the top unoccupied, I highly suggest you grow food with it. Aquaponics is one of the only ways to truly grow organically. I'll show you what my setup looks like and how the apparatus only cost me $7. <laughs> Yes, $7. It's very inexpensive to do, and it's a great alternative to hydro if you're not interested in pH balancing, adding nutrients, and just want more of a natural ecosystem type setup, then this is the one you wanna go with. So behind me here, I have my pond fish and I have all my filters unhooked just to get this set up. But the main things that we need or the main ingredients for this to work is we need to have fish that are going to excrete waste and some sort of filtration system. Now that filtration system ideally will not contain carbon or ammonia absorb or phosphorb, any of those chemical catchers in them. And instead the filter will be entirely filled with biological rock. So these are those pumice rocks, you they also are called bio stars inside of the filter. This means that the filter, instead of removing the chemicals through using carbon, for example, we are instead using the biological rocks to support microbe activity, which helps cycle that nutrients from the fish waste. This means as the nutrient is cycled, it is then put into different forms of mineralization and ultimately a bioavailable form for plant uptake. So long as we have plants present in the tank, we won't end up with any ammonium or phosphate spikes, which can cause sometimes death in fish, but otherwise extreme algae bloom growth, which is what happens when we have excess phosphate. What you feed your fish and all that sort of stuff, it really doesn't matter. You can go with any sort of feed. I will say that koi are particularly gnarly fish when it comes to waste, and they are also very hungry herbivores. Anything in cichlid or koi, goldfish, that sort of thing, they tend to be pretty ravenous. <laughs> Or plant material. So we'll see if this works out or how long it lasts or how well it does in this setup. So essentially what you're gonna need to do is get a $7 foam board. I got mine at Home Depot and then I measured out my tank width and basically wanted it so that it fits snug and isn't necessarily floating around the tank, but can fit between the two panes of glass. Now, when you go to insert it into the tank, you can expect to kind of bend or dunk it a little bit just to get it in and then it'll pop back up. The thickness of the foam ultimately is going to come down to how many plants you're expecting that foam to hold. So you could use a pool noodle if you wanted to. In this case, I'm just using this pink stuff because it is incredibly dense and it's going to hold all my plants and I have quite a few romaine plants on there. When it comes to cutting the holes, what I did is I simply cut it so that they're undersized to those cocoa pods that I put in there. So that's a cocoa fiber pod. It allows me to kind of squeeze the cocoa pod into odd shapes and kind of stuff it through. My only goal is for it to be small enough that it's going to be able to hold that pod in place without any supports or fancy gear and then ultimately have it poke out the bottom enough that the water can touch it and allow for capillary action to soak the water up into that root profile. Now this is very temporary that it needs to be like this and it only is until those roots are actually in the water that we would need that to be touching the bottom of that board. All we need to do is make sure that that water level is topped up temporarily high enough so that the plants themselves are able to get that water through the capillary action but once our roots move into that water then we're a-okay. When it comes to fertilization and pH and all that sort of stuff, I'm going to allow this tank to run its course. I'm not going to be pH adjusting. I'm not going to be adding chemical fertilizers, anything like that. While there are fertilizers out there that you can get for fish tanks, I'm not using them because koi are just, they're gross. They're, they are gross fish and they are very dirty fish. So I'm more than confident that they themselves are going to provide more than enough gunk just to keep things going. Now, keep in mind, these are pond fish, so they're not gonna be inside that long. This tank is very temporary for them. They only stay in here for about four months out of the year, otherwise they are outdoors. So in the summertime, I may not be able to run this system without some sort of chemical input because I just simply will not have enough biological inputs into the system. 
So in this case here, I am growing romaine lettuce and I am using the Mars Hydro TS-1000. These are the same lights that I got Nate to purchase for his indoor grow setup. And this is the same light that I have in my Mars Hydro tent that you guys have seen prior to. Now they have a new TS-1000, it's, it's an upgraded version. And it actually has the dimmer on the side along with a daisy chain link, which is huge. The dimmer in particular is my absolute favorite. And I'm not super happy about the height in which it is against the tank. I would ideally like it a little bit higher. And I do have some concerns that it may burn my seedlings. So this is kind of what the setup looks like in regards to the foam with the cocoa pods. It's really, truly not that fancy whatsoever. It is on water right now. So you can see as the the stand moved, you can see that this will move as well, which is completely fine. And that's what we want. It's a raft system is what we're using here. Now you could use a raft system in a Rubbermaid without any fancy cups or drilling holes in the top. And you would just use this foam pad. You can use a raft system in an aquaponic system, a hydroponic system, you name it, it'll work just fine. Now, what I will say is I have a very intense light on top of my fish tank. So I can expect some algae growth in this tank just because I'm not going to be using the phosphor or any sort of chemical removal. And I'm also have, you know, an entire section where I can feed and clean and do all that stuff with my fish on the other half of the tank, but that half of the tank is getting exposed to light. So I do expect some increase in algae growth, but theoretically, if the plants themselves are using up enough nutrients, so enough of that phosphate free floating in that water, then we should not see any algae growth. If we do, it may be that we don't have enough plants, but this is how many plants I can fit on this foam board for half of the tank, because I did have to take in mind, keep in mind that a lettuce plant in particular needs five inches of space between each plant and a general rule of thumb when growing hydroponically regardless is five inch space when it comes to doing any sort of setup or growing anything indoors. The next episode we're doing is on the cracky method, which is even less cash investment. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.